Hello and welcome to um, this week's um, lecture. Uh, we will continue um, by learning uh, a software or application called Survey123. And Survey123 pretty much is um, it's a sort of a survey by the name. It's a survey app where it basically allows you to build questionnaire but with GIS components so you can go out and collect data very easily or you can deploy it to non-GIS folks to actually capture data in the field for you. So it is just like an ordinary survey that we have, but now it has some geographic component associated with it to allow you to capture information um, or surveys with um, location in, in mind. So to do that, go to survey123.agis.com. Okay. Uh, and then you are going to sign in using your same RGIS online account. So the same account that you have is what you are going to use to sign in. All right. Now, when you go in there, after you get into Survey123, you can click on the help and the help will bring you to the, um, this page. And this page is pretty much um, has some useful information about the software. So the Survey123, we have the website component, which means that we can completely build the app um, from the browser, which is what we are going to learn today. And then here, you can install it on your device. So each of the, your device you have, you can download it from one of the app stores. So if you go to the app store and you type in Survey123, you are going to see the app and then you can install it. So whatever you, you build from either the website or what we have, what we call the connect, which will be the next one we'll do next week where you actually install the survey one, two, three app on your computer. And then you can build more complex surveys. Once you are done and you publish it, you should be able to see it in any of the app, either from the desktop, or you can also, you know, install it on your phones and actually see the app in action. So, that is one of the things you get from the help page. So once again, go to survey123.agenius.com and then you can go, um, you can get to this information that we have. So here is pretty much, um, you can build it, you can build it up. Um, you can, you know, take the survey and then you can actually uh, further. So here you can customize it a little bit more and then you can explore pretty much it uses XLS forms. So we can write some, if we're very good with XLS um, syntaxes, you can actually um, use it over here and write uh, a more um, complex uh, um, um, service. Now, the help page also is very good, useful because here, the, the team um, over the years, uh, since this project was launched, they've done a good documentation of putting up videos to show you or help you or help the users really build the surveys that they really want to uh, build. So there's a ton of uh, videos over here and most of them are very short videos. So you can easily learn it quickly and apply it in your, um, in your um, survey. So here, if I want to do some calculations, I can take a look and see how I can do a calculation for it. So for instance, if, I, if I'm collecting something like say uh, a width and then a height, right? And that means if I want to get, um, I want to do some modifications, I can see how I can do, I can use it to actually get a um, calculation um, done for me automatically so I don't have to uh, do it uh, manually. We also have some documentations on the help page. So these are all, all very useful links um, that I will encourage you to take a peek at. All right, and then you have the blog that you can, um, you can follow. Um, so here, once you are here, let's go to launch survey one, two, three. And then here is going to take you into the web. So here we are in the web component and the web one is where we are using um, RGS online to really build a survey without, um, without using anything on the desktop. So as you can see, I have a bunch of uh, surveys that we have done over the years under the account. Um, but what we are going to do is we are going to start with a new one. So here we are going to build a simple um, street light up, uh, street inspe uh, light pole inspection app. So for instance, we are on campus. We want to be able to uh, go out 
inspect each of the street lights that they have on campus to check their condition to pick information about them just like an asset inventory right we can use survey one two three to easily build an application run it on the cell phone or tablet and go out in the field and start collecting that information so that's what we are going to play with today so make sure you sign in with your school account and then once you are signing you can come over here and then your survey might be blank because you might have not created any survey yet but what you're going to do is you're going to click on uh, create a new survey and then it's going to give you two options so i talk about the web design and then we talk about a connect we are going to start with the web design which is an easy and a quick way to build a survey so let's try that let's get on that and then it's going to ask us what uh, what is the name of the survey we want to collect? So here we are going to see um, Let's call it campus um, lights um, Inspection And then I'll put my Initial over here so it doesn't get confused So I'll call this here um, SBVC as a tag and then here I will say campus lights inventory. All right. And I'll hit on create. And then this will start creating the form uh, for me. So I could start putting the questions that I want to collect whilst I go and visit each of those light poles on campus. So let's wait for this to create and then we'll proceed. So now this is the template to now build the questions on um, what we like. So here, this is um, an easy, you have the different options of um, sort of questions or templates that you want to use. And then pretty much you drag and drop it over here and then you do a little configuration and then you have a form ready to go. So for instance, here I can say I want to first, I want to get the poll ID. So if I want to get a poll ID, I'll drag the single line. So this is a single line. So I mean, uh, they are just going to enter something in here and I'm done. So what I'll do is once I drag it over here, I'll click on, on, on the field and then you see that it will take me to the edit. And then here I can change it, the on title question one and I actually call it what poll ID. So basically I'm saying that um, the first question that I want them to do is, is a poll ID, right? And then here you can say I want to bold in it, right? And then there are a couple of things you can do. If you want to put a hint, you can you can put an hint over here to say enter a poll number. And then you can make it as a required. So for instance, if you want every poll to have an ID, that means that without entering this, they cannot submit that survey. I'll just check on make it require. And that is the first, the first question is done. Then once you are done with that, you can go back onto the add. So you have the add, edit, and then appearance and settings. So I'll go back to add to add in the next question. So the next question is that I want to know for each of the polls, each pole on campus will have a control room that uh, controls that particular light pole. So that is also going to be a single a single line. So I'll drag it and then drop it um, below the second question. And then I'll click on it again. And then I will just say I want control uh, room number. So the same thing, I want them to enter the, the corresponding control room number, right? And then the next thing I want to do is I want to capture, let's say the date of the inspection. So the date, you can look over here, there's a date and a time. So here you have just a date. That means that they are just going to put a date in here. But in some cases, you also want to know the time of the inspection, depending on what you are doing, which might be critical. So you could say, I want the date and time, and the software is going to put in the date and time at when that particular survey was collected. So here, I'm only interested in the date, so I'll drag in the date and then drop the date. 
drop the date and then I'll go over here click on it and then say inspection date let me show this one is also bold and then here for the date so if I click on down the date I can say um, let the software automatically submit the date so it's go you will use the date from the device so whether you want an iPhone and or an Android or whatever it will pick up the date and then automatically populate that for you okay and then what you can do is if you want this question to be required you can also say yes I want the date because I want to know the date that that inspection was done and the same thing applies if we, if we had used the date and time that means it's going to grab in the date and then the time of the um, on the system as well okay so the next thing that we want to know is we want to know the type of pole so on campus whether the pole is electric is wood or is or is concrete we want to know that so here we are going to try something else so because here is a is a drop down it's a single single um single so we can we can make it as a drop down uh, here we don't want a multiple because the multiple means you can choose whatever you want but here we want to say we want to make it a drop down so if we can just drag the drop down and then drag it over here and then click on it and then put a question so the question is going to be pole type and in the pole type we are going to have the different choices so the choice one we can say that choice one is going to be uh, metal right so we say uh, for one the choice one is going to be metal and then two is going to be wood and then three will be we say three will be uh, concrete all right and then we can also allow other options so other here will mean that if they are not able to pick one of the choices that we have over here and it's something different they can type in whatever they want all right and then here we can also do the same we want this question to be required we can choose it to be required or not and then let's go back to the add so we can add the next question and then the next question we want to add is say on each of the light poles is it a single head or a double so we want to know the number of heads so here we can also do um, single choice so let's try a different option so you can you can you get to see the difference so single right so we can say single and then we'll put in the question as being uh, say poor heads about that and then choice one is going to be so just a single one head we can say it's two we can say it's other four or we can say other as well and then they can specify and then here you can see the appearance is vertical if I want it to be horizontal I can say horizontal and if I want to be horizontal and compact I can also do that so you have an option of playing with the look and feel um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to find out maybe the pole condition so we'll add another one and then this time we will make it as a as a drop down also so here we'll make it as a drop down drag this guy here and then we will say question is pole condition and the pole condition we are going to have the choice the choice is going to be the pole condition is either good it's fair or we want to say it's poor and then we can say if we want to add another one after that you hit on the plus and then you can say uh, maybe the poor need uh, replace you know we need to replace it and then we can also allow them to put in any other option all right so those are the basic um, we can if we want to make it as a required we can do that as a required all right so now let's see how we can add them we can add points so if you want to add a point what we can do is we can come in here and say we want to add in a what 
a geo point. So geo point, drag it and then drop it where you want the geo point to be. And then pretty much that becomes your, your location component. So when you click on that, you can say what well, pole location. And this is where we are going to capture the pole location. And then you can have the, the default map. If you, if you want to change the map, you can change that map as well. Um, so you can change that. Say I want the imagery with label. And now you can see the base map is and then what you can do is you can zoom in down much closer to maybe the area that you are interested in working. So here I am in Riverside. I can come down to San Bernardino and Let me find my bearing a little bit. Highland is here, so the screw should be somewhere. Yeah, um, screw should be right here. So I can zoom in on the campus. So when the map opens up, it's going to be on campus. And you could have typed in the address. I mean, if you if you want to do, you can type in the address. That's fine. Um, the other thing we can do is we can also say that we want to what, allow um, pictures to be taken. So I do the inspection. I want to be able to attach a picture. That means that an image. So I can drag the image and then drop the image over here. And then I can say, I want that would be the the photo. So if you want people to take more than one photo, then you can say photo one. And then you go back and then you add another another image. And that becomes photo two. So it will allow multiple photos to be taken. And basically we have a form that we've developed and then we I always say whenever you build a form like that always give the people the chance to write a note because if they see anything out in the field they can write it so here you can put it and call it comments or notes and then what you can do is you can specify um, what then what they, they want that to be and also you could also add in um, notes or you can even do the mortar line so I'll try to prefer the mortar line let's um, hit on the lid on this guy let's, let's do this guy here let's bring in a mortar line so you can do the mortar line and then just put in notes Okay, so now we have we have that. The mortar line will pretty much allow allow you to enter multiple. So it will keep adding lines. Uh, the note is a little restrict. Uh, the note will restrict you, but the mortar line is the best one to do. Um, so pretty much you can see we have we have um, we have the form built in the way that um, I think. You know, gets us across the first first line of just using survey one to three, and then here you can always hit on save. Um, it's good advice. So everything that we've done so far, you don't want to lose it. So hit on save on that. Um, and there are a couple of other other options that you can see. So here is all about the styling, the type of question that you want, how you want it to lay out. If I'm doing something that I want people to rate something, then I can use the rating. So the rating could have been used for the condition of the poll. Whether the poll was good, bad, or ugly, we can use a rating um, approach to do it. And as I said, this is a, there's a time. This will only give you the time. But here you can get a time and a field. Um, if you want the ability to upload a picture, we can do that. 
and then also here grouping grouping is an option whereby we can group sub questions so if we have questions that we want to group them we can put all of them into one group so you have like a sub you know, uh, subcategories of um, of pictures with different um, of questions with different groups um, associated with the um, different questions associated with that group so and then each of them we can edit it by selecting it come to edit and then changing the appearance the the name and all that um, and then we go to appearance the appearance pretty much is how your form is going to look like so here you can see I have just this uh, green and then I have this uh, background if I want to use something crazy then you can choose something like that or you can um, you can pull yours from an existing survey or you can share something that your organization is already using or you can decide to use um, any of this pre-built one but you always want to make sure you don't pick a background which is going to take people's attention from the main importance um, work that you've done with the survey itself so that's just a question that I'll, I'll, I'll give you over there now the next thing here is the settings the settings pretty much says here when after I'm done uh, collecting one information what do you want um, what do you want people to see so if I want to give them a preview then I'll give them a preview of the question if I don't want them to get a preview then I just go straight over here and then here this is the message you'll get great your data has been successful and then you just bye bye um, you can go on to the next one and collect it so it's entirely up to you on the preview um, option and then it says and then this is this is the wording that you see after you submit a question so if you don't like a particular uh, if you don't like it you can change that and put whatever you want over there um, in a setting and that will um, and then you can allow the correspondent to add another so pretty much means that if I'm going to do a field inspection then what I can do is I can collect a bunch of them and then add multiple but if it's just a survey to your general population and you only want one answer for one correspondent then you can limit them to say that they cannot add um, add another so they only be allowed to add one survey per that particular user so those are the options that we have over there um, so with those changes we can still hit on save and then if we want to see how our survey is going to look like then we can hit on the preview and then the preview is going to show us how our survey um, will look like so here this is how it's going to look like remember the background that I chose um, so that is how it's going to look like in in the desktop environment if I go on a phone that is how the survey is going to look like on the phone right so something that you can go out and do and then if I'm on a, on a portrait then if I'm on a tablet on an iPad or Galaxy or whichever one you use this is how it's going to also scale so you have an idea of how the survey is going to be seen on each of those devices and it doesn't matter how big or small the screen is the application is built to scale the size up and down to allow the user to be able to uh, to to get input so once I'm done with the preview I can hit on close and then pretty much when I'm good with that the next thing we do is we hit on pub publish so if you hit on publish the same way like we publish a service this is now going to create that survey and that survey becomes available um, either on the on the web on the uh, on the browser or from our uh, the collector uh, survey one two three app that we can we can um, use it from the from the phone so hit on publish and then it says what well, all changes will be saved and then let's go ahead and says go ahead and publish it and now it's going to go ahead and create this particular survey application for us so let's wait for it to to finish publishing so right now the survey has been published um, that means that is there now on the survey one two three page here you can see this is the design so this is where I just um, design it and then the next one is called the collaborate so the collaborate is pretty much the surveys that you submit who do you want to share with so if I create a survey just for um, 
the people in this valley account i will just share that with the people um so this particular survey we created is only going to be seen by members who are part of the valley college account if i want the whole public to see it then i will check the uh, make it public as well all right now that's pertaining to this particular one but i need to get you to understand the public thing very well so here i'm only going to share it with the valley college organization 